Kenneth Albert Saunders went missing on August 5th, 2015 from Hedrick, Kentucky. He was 31 years old at the time of his disappearance. He was a white male, six foot one and 185 pounds. Um, this is in Knox County, Kentucky. His father had reached out to his girlfriend that he was living with at the time when he had not heard from his son in about three months. He stated that it was unlike his son not to contact the family because he get, his mail came to his father's house and he had not come by to pick up his mail. He had not called or spoken to anyone in the family. Someone told him that his son, Kenneth, had gone to Jacksonville, Florida for a job. Now, part of what I read about in the description of his, uh, of his um, information was that he was a truck driver of some kind. I believe he hauled uh, uh, cars between states, and I could be wrong about that, but that was, that was included in one story that he... Um, he was a truck driver and there are some photos of a vacation. It looks like maybe it was in Florida on his Facebook page. So it could be that he really was wanting to move to Florida. His information was given to the Jacksonville, Florida police department, and they did list him as a missing person, but they were never able to find any, um, anything to indicate that he, was in Florida. Um, the police handling this case is the Knox County Sheriff's Office, and their phone number is 606-546-3181. From the photographs of him, it looks as though he was very physically fit and enjoyed his time outdoors. There's photos of him here kayaking and things like that, and he he was a Marine. I don't know if he was still in, in the Marines actively or if he had um, left the Marine Corps. He is a white male with brown hair and hazel eyes. His lower lip is pierced. He has a scar running almost the entire length of his left arm. I looked through some of his photos to see if I could see that and include it. He goes by the nickname Kenny. And he has a tattoo of his name, Saunders, across his lower abdomen. He has one large tattoo on his rib cage. And um, he was driving a white Dodge Ram 2500 pickup truck. His father contacted his girlfriend after he had not heard from his son. His girlfriend, who is the mother of two of his children, stated he had gone to Florida to look for a job. Saunders was estranged from his wife, Sonny. Now, these are two different women. The girlfriend's name is Marlene, and the, the wife's name was Sonny. Now, the two of them were uh, separated, but they were still legally married. So, the last time Sonny says that she spoke to him was in July of 2015. She said he sounded stressed at the time, and his wife asked if he was okay, and he said, not right now, but I will be. After his disappearance, Saunders' girlfriend moved to Florida. He had had a volatile relationship with her, even though she has not been named as a suspect. Now, there is a story about what was going on with her and uh, that he, he was having some trouble with her family at the time, now, the girlfriend claims that he wasn't in contact with Sonny. It could be that she didn't know that he was. It could be the fact that he was actually in contact with Sonny and she found this out. This could have led to more problems. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just reading through this. Saunders is a former Marine and has two children. He worked in car sales and would drive vehicles from Kentucky to Florida. Also, his social security number has not been active since he disappeared. 
His Facebook account was deactivated, but now there is a Facebook account for him because I looked it up just this very morning and the last post on there, the last update was a, a the last public post was in 2015. According to witnesses, the situation between Kenny, Marlene, and her family was quite volatile. He had been beaten up, shot at, and threatened to be killed and never found. Now, according to some people, this was from one of her brothers, or maybe her only brother, I'm not sure, but it just says that um, the, the, the rumor was, or the story that he had maybe told someone else was that that a member of her family, believed to possibly be her brother, had beaten him up, shot at him, and threatened to kill him, told him that he would never be found. Marlene, it was said, even threatened to keep the children from seeing him. He did not want to lose his children, and he did not want to leave them, regardless of the threats that were made. Now, knowing of these threats, you would think that the police would be hot on the trail of this family, but I haven't been able to locate anything that states that they were really ever even investigated. However, I was able to find that some neighbor residents said they had not seen Kenny uh, in much longer period of time before he was actually reported missing. They also never, con no one ever contacted the local police to ask. Now, here's, here's what they're saying. Let me just kind of narrow this down. Supposedly, he leaves to go to Florida. He's not heard from. No one, his, his girlfriend that he was living with and had children with had not heard from him. At no point did she reach out to, um, I don't know if they checked his social media or hers to see if she had attempted to message him or call him. If she was not calling his phone or texting him or sending him messages, this would indicate that she knew there was no reason to. If she was trying to reach him and he was not responding to her, this would have given her reason to reach out to the police or family or friends of his. Did she not reach out to the company that he supposedly went to work for? So people are asking the question, if it was proven that she had not reached out to anybody to ask of his whereabouts or to try to contact him, this may indicate that she knew that there was no reason to because she knew he was not in Florida at all. However, she did later move to Florida. Um, it says here that she does. it does not appear that she made any efforts to search for him. And it seems as though she has been unwilling to help attempt to locate him. A loving, doting father of two literally vanishes, endured hell to stay with his children, suddenly just to up and leave them. So he put up with the abuse from her family. He put up with the threats simply because he didn't want to leave his children. He didn't want to leave them alone here. But he leaves supposedly to go to Florida. Um, if his girlfriend was planning to move to Florida as well, why did the three of the, or the four of them not just leave altogether and go to Florida? Why haven't local media outlets made any attempt to get his name and face in the headlines? Why aren't the police being more aggressive when pushing for information? It seems that Kenny's family and friends have tried endlessly to get his story on the local news stations, but they seem to be ignoring everything. This seems to be something a good journalist would want to get their hands on. Well, if you watched my most recent video, and I talked about Amber Spradlin, and in, in, this, in that video, I talked about how one local news outlet got the information wrong. They said that she was stabbed to death in her home that she had just purchased. 
For anyone reading that who did not know the truth about the story, they would assume that this was a random break-in, that someone came to her home, broke into her home, and murdered her. When in fact, everyone that, that has heard about this story from day one knows that she was murdered inside the home of a local business owner and dentist. And it was actually um, his family owned the restaurant where she worked. So everyone knows that and everyone asks, why did this news outlet not correct that information? Why did they not do a retraction and, and publicly say, we got that wrong? Well, it just so happens that the same news outlets that got that story wrong are the same news outlets they're talking about here with Kenneth Saunders' story because it's, it's a local there's there's a local TV outlet in Hazard, Kentucky. They would cover both of those areas. There's a local news outlet in Lexington, Kentucky, who would carry these stories. Uh, Knox County is being close to Tennessee. There may have been one or two local outlets in that area. So it does seem that the local news just really does not, you know, push these stories and try to keep them relevant. There's always more questions than answers. I don't know if someone involved in Kenny's disappearance is being protected by law enforcement or if the detectives on the case were simply negligent. It was kind of hinted around that, he, that her family had ties and connections and this is the same thing. I, I think things have been said about the family involved in the home where this Amber Spradlin was murdered. They have ties and connections to law enforcement in Floyd County, Kentucky. And it's been said that this family of this, uh, the girlfriend, uh, that her family may also have ties and connections to law enforcement in Knox County. Now, I don't know that. I'm just, this is, the, you know, comments. You can go to the Finding Kenneth Facebook page, which sadly has not been updated since 2020, that they are still following the case. They're still working on it. They're still trying to keep it relevant. And um, someone asked the question, did they ever find his truck? Did they ever search any waterways in the area for the truck? And I don't, I doubt that they did. Honestly, just, you know, off the top of my head, thinking about it, the fact that Unsolved Appalachia reported that there was very little investigation and it seemed like the police didn't really pursue it too hard. Um, Maybe they were not thinking, you know, they were not going to put in the effort to go and search waterways for this man's truck. It says here that reports say property owned by Marlene's parents was searched in 2019, but nothing was found. She was never named a suspect. Saunders' disappearance continues to remain a mystery. The Knox County Sheriff's Office is continuing to investigate. If anyone has any information, they should call 606-546-3181. He refused to leave his kids, regardless of the threats that were made against him. Now, I don't know what was going on there. Um, I don't know what the situation was. But it sounds as though this woman that he had children with was taking the side of her family and threatening him. Was this all over the children, the custody of the children? According, okay, not knowing of the threats. Now, not now knowing of the threats, you would think that police would have been more willing to investigate Marlene and her family. But after reaching out to Kenny's family, it's quite the contrary. Local law enforcement never contacted the police in the area of Florida where he was supposedly going to find a job. So the Knox County Sheriff's Office, the local police, I don't know about the Kentucky State Police, 
but they're saying that they never reached out to the Jacksonville, Florida police, but no one ever reached out to these people in Florida to see if he had actually made it there, if he was actually living there. Kenny's family had to do that themselves. They had to hire a private investigator who discovered that his phone and bank account have not been accessed since his disappearance. His social security number has not been used, and his Facebook account had no activity, such as Messenger. So he wasn't, he wasn't staying in contact with anybody. It seems like the local police didn't really want, even want to investigate his disappearance. In 2015, there were several times that missing posters were put up around Barbersville, Barberville, Kentucky, and someone kept tearing them down. Since his disappearance, Marlene moved to Florida. It doesn't appear that she's made any efforts to search for Kenneth. Her entire family seems to be content with the fact that he went missing without a trace. Now, this was 2015, so eight years ago. What are the ages of his children now? Are they adults now, or are they still young children? The reason I ask that question is because um, they would his the 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 mother of the, his children would he have had to have been declared legally dead in order for them to receive his benefits such as his social security benefits or his uh, marine corps uh, military benefits. I don't know. I don't know if he's been declared dead, and I don't know who would have been. The considered the next of kin, I'm assuming, if he was still legally married to this Sonny, despite the fact that it says they were estranged, if they were still legally married, she would probably have been in charge of taking care of all that. But the fact that he had children with another woman would have given her some leeway, I guess, on behalf of his children. So that's just a question that I wondered about. Anybody out there that maybe knows the answer to that question? Um, this is from Web Sleuths, and it basically goes on to tell um, Kenneth was last seen in Barberville, Kentucky, based on information provided by the wife that he was separated from. He was a truck driver, and he worked at moving trucks between Knox County, Kentucky, and Pasco County, Florida. He had a girlfriend named Marlene G. Blair, and she is considered to be the last person to have had contact with him. Despite local law enforcement, no news media has covered this case. According to Saunders' wife, a friend reached out to his family and informed them that Saunders had traveled to Jacksonville, Florida for work. However, over the years it is known it was known that the family of Miss Blair and Miss Blair herself had made threatening remarks toward him, and at one point her brother had threatened him with a gun. A welfare check was executed shortly after he disappeared, and the Pasco County, Florida Sheriff's Office and According to some witnesses, Saunders was never seen at the residence. So I don't know if they're referring to a residence in Florida where he, did he have a home in Florida? Did he have a place where he stayed when he was working between the states? Or are they, can, are they talking about the property in Kentucky? I can't believe there hasn't been anyone sleuthing for this guy. This is a post from a web sleuth user. I just happened to be looking around yesterday and came upon his case at the Facebook Kentucky Missing Persons page. I've never posted on here before, but for some reason this man's story stood out to me. Messages to his ex-wife and the girlfriend moving, acting so aloof about him supposedly going to Florida to work and three months passed with no one having had any contact from him. 
That is very questionable to me. I'm surprised he hasn't gotten more attention. He's still considered a missing person, but there's just been so little said about him, if not for his family. If his father had never reached out to this woman that he had children with and asked about his whereabouts, would they have ever attempted to reach out to the public? Um, this is the reason why so many people believe that, his, that her family had something to do with it, that they know that he's not coming back, and um, I'm just going through some different websites looking to see what I might find, but everything is coming back to the same story pretty much. Someone just asked the question, did they ever find the truck? That was what I was searching for. Not to my knowledge, I'm currently on another website that gives some scary details about a certain family member, but nothing about the truck. Now this was all dated in 2018. So, these are people on web sleuths and they're sleuthing around. I was really hoping to create a stir about him his ex-wife, Sonny, requested me to make this web sleuth page for him, and I told her that I would work on it. Unfortunately, there hasn't been a solid lead other than arrows that point back to the mother of his children and her family. I'm not aware of any human remains found that might match Kenneth. Something inside of me says that he's still alive. I came across an old topics discussion from last year, and there were a lot of fighting amongst the ex and some of the Knox County citizens. So what some people are saying here is that some of the rumors that were being floated around on topics and in the community was that he had dumped his wife, Sonny, and had taken up this Marlene and had kids with her, and that Sonny was jealous and trying to cause trouble, and that she, now they're not suggesting that she did anything to him, but they're suggesting that she was the one who was pointing fingers at the other side, claiming that they had done something to him just because she was angry because he had taken up this other woman. Now, for the person who said they believe deep down inside that he might still be alive, no bank account activity, unless he had money, cash. I don't some people in the community said that they know some of the family members of this other woman, the woman that he was had children with, and that some of them were psychotic. Um, these are all just comments on web sleuths that go from 2018. Now, this is an article from 2019. With the help of the Knox County Special Operations Rescue Team and K-9 units from Campbell County, Tennessee, and Pikeville, Kentucky, two locations were combed in search of traces of Saunders, who was reported missing in 2015. I don't know how things work in, in, in like, um, missing persons, you have the Knox County, Kentucky sheriffs. So now, Knox County is a small community. Maybe they didn't want to get tangled up with this family because people on topics were saying they were psycho and that they were troublemakers and all. I don't know anything about them. It's, it's possible that this family in Knox County may have also been connected. They may have been, they, they were either possibly connected to people in law enforcement and government or whatever, and they were well-liked or well-known, or they were the opposite. They were troublemakers and known to be people that you didn't mess with, and the police just didn't really want to go there, you know? I don't know Kenneth Saunders' background as far as, you know, other than he was a Marine, and they said he was a truck driver. 
What about the Marine Corps? What about the military? Do they do any kind of um, searches for missing people? If, if he was retired from the Marines, they might not have. Um, he would have been considered AWOL if he were still in the military, but a lot of people in the military will sometimes have mental health problems. Is there something in place in the mili within the military for people who maybe do go missing? We hear a lot of veterans end up homeless on the streets, either because they're not getting the mental health treatment that they need, they're not getting the medical care or housing that they need. And is it possible, some people say they believe he's still alive, is it possible that he had had enough of the bickering back and forth, fighting and arguing with these two women that he just decided to leave? Most people don't believe that because his family says that there's no way that he would have left his kids. And I appreciate everybody for taking the time to listen. Uh, I really had hoped to find more about this man, more that I could um, offer. And hopefully this man turns up sometime. He's been missing for eight years. And hopefully, if he is alive out there, hopefully he turns up.